for uh, joining today. I know that we are trying to keep on schedule, so I'll go through this rather quickly. Um, this, for those of you who don't know, uh, I am the Associate Director for International Technology for the World Data System, uh, hosted at the University of Victoria in uh, Western Canada with the WDS member Ocean Networks Canada. Um, we were created late 2018 uh, with a primary mandate to make significant contributions to the global research data infrastructure, sometimes referred to now as the Global Open Research Commons, and we'll talk a bit more about that in just a second. Uh, but we had a, a four primary um, directives for the office uh, to promote access to open quality shared data, support global initiatives, especially through RDA, build a strong international community, and um, develop and provision services. And so um, for the first two years of the office, we've been focused on these two, the first two um, directives with a, with a keen eye towards the second two, and I'm just going to quickly catch you up on where we are for that. Um, for those of you who um, participated um, in the 2019 ITO member survey, I have to thank you for that because I'm sure that a lot of you feel over-surveyed at times. But, um, you know, working with such a diverse membership, it is quite tricky to try to figure out a program um, that can satisfy uh, such a diverse community. Um, but what we did learn from the WDS, from the 2019 survey, which is available online now, and, and you've got the link there, the report from that is available online, um, was to, my choice was to create a syndication program, um, working on two work packages at the onset, one to support members who are interested in harvesting metadata services, and those who are interested in schema.org. And so we were able to get uh, money from the Canadian government to hire full, two full-time staff members dedicated to each program. The Harvestable Metadata Services is a, is a WDS uh, working group that's, in, um, that's going on right now. We have um, a, a series of deliverables coming from that group, including documented use cases from uh, seven WDS members. Um, our goal as we walk through the working group is to um, help them create an implementation plan. So the idea is that they have uh, good metadata, but they do not yet have a harvestable service that allows them to be aggregated. And so we're helping them create an implementation plan, and then we're collecting lessons learned and creating some guidance materials on common themes and challenges. All of this will be open and available to the, the public at large. Um, the deliverables come in many different forms. We've got a flowchart that helps you uh, go through the step-by-step -step of um, creating a harvestable service. We are creating a guide to harvesters with our, uh, some of our local partners here in Canada and some shor shorter sort of uh, postcard sorts of uh, things. Um, so this will come out in uh, sort of several different formats and if there's any other um, products with any of these work packages that you think would be uh, useful, please, please let me know. Um, for the schema.org package, when it, this was mentioned a lot in the um, earlier sessions. So again, the general uh, driving factor for this is that people, folks want to be involved or get, uh, have their metadata uh, indexed by data, Google dataset search. The promise, of course, is that um, what Google Scholar did for publications, Google Dataset Search uh, could use for, could do with um, datasets as well, just making them more broadly available. It's also a, um, a fairly lightweight step into the semantic web as well. Um, this work is being done primarily by, uh, in conjunction with our, the RDA Research Metadata Schemas uh, Working Group, which is a really fantastic group of folks over at RDA who have, we are creating uh, three deliverables, uh, a generic conceptual data model of essential data types and properties, uh, a guideline uh, for common patterns and examples of how you can market your metadata, and toolings uh, for market as well. And again, we are contributing to this working group and extending it as well. Um, as an example, you can see that um, we have a series of crosswalks between schema.org and some common metadata schemas. Um, we have a set of visualizations, and again, I'll make the, the, the links available to you, but we have a set of visualizations that allow users, for example, to choose a schema.org property and then see the crosswalk with all of the metadata formats. Um, and it shows you how other people have chosen to, to implement schema.org and shows where there's um, 
consensus amongst the community. And we're working on a roadmap now for this and other um, deliverables in, in terms of how to make them uh, useful and available to the community. So um, we're in this, so the syndication project or the syndication program um, is uh, a pathway to to our initial um, mandate of the of the office, which was to create contributions to the global research data infrastructure or the global open science commons research commons. So whether you're providing data services, um, either you know an import search or you're going through some sort of aggregator, or whether you're engaged in data visitation um, as you migrate to cloud services where you're sending compute to the data. Um, our part of the goal of the ITO is to make sure that however you're syndicating, that you're integrated into this larger commons. And I think that that's gonna happen in a number of different areas and a number of different um, stages. Um, so again, for those who are not familiar with this term, the Global Open Research Commons is just this vision of having all digital scientific artifacts available and interoperable online at all times. Um, and again, through RDA, um, we are, I'm working with a relatively new interest group, the Global Open Research Commons Interest Group, um, and we have created a, a new working group, or in the process of creating a new working group to look at benchmarking, to look at features of, of the uh, different cloud services. So it's a mechanism to try to coordinate the African Open Science Platform, the European Open Science Cloud, the IBOA, all of these national, pan-national and domain sort of commons research infrastructures. And so um, I think one of the stages, um, one of the first things we might do is look at catalogs of services. So if any of you have ever, you know, gone over to the European Open Science Guide and you see this um, catalog of service, what that is is just behind the, behind the scenes there is just a registry of services. Um, and this is a European Open Science Guide has chosen the e-infra standard for a, a service catalog. Um, and so one of the things that I'd like to do is make sure that the members uh, support the members and make sure that their data services are included in the appropriate cloud infrastructure, whether it's the European cloud or the domain cloud or whatever it is. So just registering the services is one sort of pathway to the GORP implementation. Um, we can also look at the science path, path graph or the PID graph. We tend to think of the sort of minimum viable product um, for data services to be a metadata uh, identifier and, and a vocabulary service. And if I know that many of you have implemented some sort of Scholex framework or some sort of way of linking data to publications that then that you are now then part of the science graph. And this is a mechanism that allow us to find either related or similar artifacts online. So that's another pathway to that integration. And then the, the third pathway we can think about is um, in terms of the virtual research environments or the virtual labs um, or, or notebooks. And I know folks have mentioned Jupyter Notebooks earlier in the session today. My experience with the gateway community um, is that they are primarily a bring your own data. So quite often the user has to go find the data, bring it, download it, and then upload the data into the gateway. And what I'd like to see happen is figuring out how the data um, can be part of the back end to the gateway or the virtual lab or the notebook. And I know that with notebooks, you can do a direct connect to data services or you can include small data sets within your notebook. Um, but I wonder if, if we need to help support a discovery layer so that a, so the user can come into a gateway or a virtual, virtual environment, actually do the search and find and access the data through the gateway all in one workflow. Um, and I do think that some of the discussions we're having about the cloud migrations could be could be really helpful here. Um, and I'm going to drop a link to, into uh, the chat about uh, a couple of just um, brochures and the flyer, more about the ITO. I, I just do want to say though that um, we are, as Alex mentioned, we are doing a lot of strategic planning. Um, we are very keen to get your feedback on um, how we can support you and we take your um, comments very seriously. And I really do want to thank everybody who took the time to make these um, short video presentations. It's a great way to get to know um, what the core issues are for a whole lot of different members. So I really appreciate you taking the time. They were well done and really interesting. Um, and I think that's all I've got. I think I'm keeping us on time. Uh, Alex, I can turn that back over to you. Oops. Already, but go ahead and take it away one leg. 
Yes, thank you, Alex. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, yeah, now we have, uh, uh, yeah, we have some time to discuss about ITO activities. Yeah, as I know, uh, ITO worked very hard in the past half years. They hosted uh, two meetings every three weeks to talk about the medical harvestable, uh, yeah, uh, mechanisms. Yeah, so so. so so, so thank you all. If you have have some questions and comments, yeah, please, uh, please give us. So, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, um, I, iPhone eight had their hand up, so maybe they, um, whoever they are, would like to ask a question. Okay, uh, Professor Liu Chuang. Yeah. So, uh, my question is. Uh, um, are there any uh, standard for the WDS uh, metadata uh, system? So we we have this uh, metadata for uh, every month we send it to the Web of Science. Uh, that is a uh, uh, data citation index. So they have this one. So is the same or the different? Um, I am not aware of a WDS standard for metadata, if, that, if, that, if I understood the question correctly. Um, I do know that that is one of the um, services or sort of the value add of, of many of the aggregator services, whether it's, you know, uh, data site or open air, or, um, they do harmonize uh, a lot of the input data. Um, and that's why I think when people start looking at building the global open science cloud they're going to look to aggregators first um, and that's one reason why we wanted to create a syndication program that supported aggregators was because we could see that sort of snowballing into this larger cloud um, it's also interesting that having a harvestable metadata service is also um, a precursor to a lot of data visitation um, uh, uh, software as well so um so i feel like i i didn't answer your question though i do, I, there is not, as far as I know, a WDS standard for metadata, but maybe somebody can correct me on that. Okay, thanks, uh, Karen. There are also some messages from the chat box. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Mabro yeah, mentioned the maybe some help for the database building. Uh, yeah, we talked about metadata, yeah, uh, of course. But also some knowledge about the database building is also required for this community. Yes, maybe ITO can do some activities for database building. Yeah. Um, Michael, do you I feel like you had a comment? Yeah, I want to recur on, on schema. Yeah, yes. so the question the question for um, having a common metadata standard to, to be applied in the context of WDS, I think um, we, we, changed, we changed more recently, you know, when, when in 2018, Google brought up this Google data search and we said, well, this is the way to go, you know, um, because it allows for community extensions. So you have a set of, uh, of, um, of fields, you know, of, of tags that you can use. Uh, for all different communities, and then you can do your own community extensions. And as I mentioned, you know, in the biodiversity uh, domain, this already had happened. Um, so they have uh, elaborated quite a number of new profiles. And uh, I think that that's a very good way, um, at, at least on the metadata level, um, to find this commonality needed uh, in order to, to make this a feasible uh, game, you know, when when you try to harvest metadata from, uh, I don't know how many regular members we have. Well, at, at the, in the best time, you know, Pangea was able to harvest, um, let's say, 15 or 16 of the members. Uh, certainly, you know, this also depends on the metadata catalogs uh, supplied, but uh, it's it's too it's too heterogeneous. So um, we need to to go in the in the in the other direction. So. The interoperability has to come from the from the data centers, and they have to align um, to a common standard, or at least a handful of that. Yeah, and I would say uh, Schema.org is a very good candidate. Thank you, thank you, Mac. So please, we have some comment. 
Yes, thank you. So just briefly, I, I support this idea from, from Michael and Karen that we standardize for argument's sake using schema.org. It probably also includes Datasite simply because Datasite offers a conversion service to schema.org or they shortly will if they haven't started yet. But what one has to recognize is that reusability is not served by these uh, generalized uh, metadata records. So within WDS at least and in support of, of FAIR, one will have to provide a link to the original uh, domain or format specific uh, metadata so that end users that need more information can easily find it. So I think for, for discoverability and for citation purposes, uh, schema.org and data site will work very, very well, but we need to take that extra step to link to, to specific metadata from uh, the given discipline as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Vin. Um, and I think that's part of what the the, the question about extensions um, and the role of, of domain extensions in schema.org is ongoing, especially since the governance and the uh, creation of extensions that, that changed recently um, uh, in terms of uh, Google won't accept extensions, but they will monitor them um, but we can certainly move forward with extensions within the domain um, without Google being a part of that. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Wim. Any comment? Um, with these extensions that you're talking about, would Google then um, be able to search on them? Would they be able to index and search via these extensions too? Right, so um, they certainly could. There's nothing, there's no reason why they couldn't. The question is whether or not they're gonna choose to put that into their product, which, um, you know, that, that, that public interface, which I doubt. They tended to lead, they tended to, you know, try to capture the most common use case and then, and then leave the specifics uh, to the users. But there's no reason why our, our products, our software um, couldn't utilize the extensions. Um, they, they have hosted terms and they have the terms in quarantine. So, um, and those, you know, the, there you are very free, you know, to, to do what you want. So it's a matter of, of agreement within the community. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you all for this uh, positive, constructive discussion. But the time is, uh, is over. We will have to move it to, to, to Alex.